Good morning. Oh, look at my camera. I don't know what happened there. Uh, there's always something new, isn't there? Let's see if we can... Well, no. So, uh, welcome to our live stream. I'm going to work on this while I talk to you. I actually have a couple um, things I wanted to bring to your attention before we began. Uh, the first is that I have published on our website the, uh, the upcoming schedule for the congregation at prayer for next week, as w which is what we use here in our daily stream, but also um, the orders of service for the um, services that will be on uh, Thursday evening at 7 p.m. That's for Maundy Thursday. Also uh, on Friday at 1 p.m. That's our Good Friday service. And also um, for... I got to think about this. Oh, Good Friday evening, the Tenebrae service. And then uh, Holy Saturday, we, we are going to have our Easter vigil, which I had, I think, mentioned before that I had intended uh, to introduce to the congregation this year. Um, but unfortunately, uh, due to the schedule, we haven't been able to do that. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. I'll get this straightened out here in a minute. And also... Um, Coming up on uh, on uh, Easter, we will have uh, our own service on Easter Sunday at 9.30. And then I understand there's actually going to be um, a synod-wide service available to us um, that will be published out of the International Center in St. Louis. Um, so we'll share that as well. So a couple opportunities coming up on Easter Sunday for you to, um, to hear God's word and to be fed and edified by Jesus. Also, today uh, is Saturday before Palm Sunday. Tomorrow, Palm Sunday, our service will be at 9.30, and uh, it will follow an order of service that you, of course, can use um, online, that you can just follow along like we do here. Or if you're tuning in with the phone, uh, it should come in the mail today, uh, hopefully. And otherwise, um, you know, obviously you can listen as you would to like a radio program where you don't get a bulletin <laughs> and participate. All right, so there are a couple different options there. Uh, because tomorrow's Palm Sunday, what we do on the congregation at prayer, this daily prayer, is on the Saturday previous to Sunday, we actually consider usually the gospel and the epistle reading, sometimes uh, the epistle and the Old Testament reading, all right, so that we're able then um, to hear God's word on Sunday um, in a way that it's it's not like just startling new, but but actually we've had some time to consider it. All right, so uh, this is a good practice to have. It's one of the reasons why on the congregation at prayer that we uh, provided in the bulletins when we could meet corporately, uh, it would have next Sunday's hymns and readings, or usually at least the readings, if not the hymns too, for the coming Sunday. So you would have an opportunity, again, to look those over in your devotions throughout the week um, and, and to come on Sunday morning having a much fuller picture of all of the themes um, that the readings give us because obviously in preaching and teaching, I, I can only emphasize one or two, maybe three ideas at most um, in the time that we have. So uh, that's a good practice, and that's what we'll be doing here today. All right. Um, by the way, those of you who are tuned in on the phone, um, the service that we're using for that recently made some changes, as a matter of fact, just overnight, um, that will probably make it difficult for you to tune in uh, without a password, all right? So um, if you're tuned in over the phone, um, I'm going to send out a password uh, over our, our voice um, message system so that you'll get that. Uh, you'll want to be sure to note that. I couldn't put that in the materials you received in the mail because I just got it last night, all right? So it was a little late to make it into the mail that went out this week. So um, if you need a password and you don't get it via voicemail, be sure to contact me and I'll make sure to give you that password. It may be required here moving forward. I don't know when that's going to take effect for sure. Very good. So let's begin with our order of prayer, congregation of prayer for Utica, Lent 5. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Psalm 75, let's pray it together. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks, for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. At the set time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. When the earth totters and all its inhabitants, it is I who keep steady its pillars. I say to the boastful, do not boast. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up 
your horn on high or speak with haughty neck. For not from the east or from the west, and not from the wilderness comes lifting up. But it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed, and he pours out from it, and all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. But I will declare it forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our memory verse uh, for this week is from, well, hold on, it's not cooperating here. Scroll, scroll, there we go. Our memory verse is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Say it with me. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And our catechism, commandments 4 through 10, and the table of duties of civil government, Romans 13, 1 through 4. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. There ends our catechism reading. Now, uh, our first reading for today is from Philippians chapter 2. Again, this is the epistle for tomorrow. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There ends the reading. And then our narrative reading for today is from Matthew chapter 21. Hold on one second. Today, Saturday, my children are being a little bit louder. Hopefully it's not too loud on the recording. All right, Matthew 21. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you. Uh, you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. 
Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. There ends our reading. All right. I'm going to see if I can uh, have them cut out the piano next door. <laughs> Let's uh, consider our, our text here. Well, maybe not. There we are. Hold on one second. Plain scales. It's all right. Matthew 21, looking at verse 1, what uh, town were they near? Again, this is the gospel according to Matthew. Tomorrow, actually, for Palm Sunday, we're going to hear the triumphal entry according to John. The town uh, they were near was Bethphage. Do you know what Bethphage means? That's how we say it in English. It's bait. Uh, which means house, or fagi, or fagi, is of early figs. This is the house of early figs. <laughs> Neat name. What other location was near there? That's the Mount of Olives, of course. What did Jesus do? He sent, there in verse 1, he sent two disciples ahead to bring him a donkey and a colt. And what were they to tell anyone who asks? Right there in verse 3, the Lord has need of them. And what would happen? They would immediately send them. You see that in verse 3 as well. Why did this happen? Matthew records that this was to fulfill the word spoken by the prophet. Now, which prophet? <laughs> A little quiz here. Prophet Zechariah. And the words that followed there in verse 5 are Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, uh, Zechariah, um, you want to look here at, at chapter 11. I think we talked Zechariah yesterday, too. It's quite a bit of Zechariah. Uh, in the Passion story then. Uh, Zechariah 11, verse 12 and following. We'll go back just a little bit. Thus the poor of the flock who were watching me knew that it was the word of the Lord. Then I said to them, quote, If it is agreeable to you, give me my wages, and if not, re refrain. So they weighed out my wages, 30 pieces of silver. Hmm. And the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter, that princely prince they set on me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord for the potter. Huh, the potter's field. Yeah, thinking of um, Judas's betrayal there. Now go to chapter 12, verse 10. So just the next chapter, verse 10, where it is recorded. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication, this is the one we looked at yesterday. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as the one as one grieves for his firstborn. But you'll want to keep reading in Zechariah and look at the next chapter, say chapter 13, verse say 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion, says the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And I will turn my hand against the little ones. All right. So um, just gave you a few examples there. But the coming death of Jesus and the destruction of Jerusalem um, are foretold. And this is setting the context uh, for that. What other king came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey? Like we looked at this uh, maybe now two weeks ago. That was Solomon, 1 Kings chapter 1, 33 to 40. Again, son of David. Here Jesus is the true son of David. What did the disciples do before Jesus sat on the animals? So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. Verse 6, verse 7, they brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. So they laid their clothes on the donkeys. What did the multitude do? Yeah, you know this text well. They spread their clothes on the road and cut down branches from the trees, right? And spread them out on the road. What might the clothing on the road signify? 
And by signify, we mean this actually happened. This is historic data, right? But what were they trying to show by putting their cloaks on the road? Well, I would say theologically, um, whether they knew it or not, what they were suggesting is they were giving their clothing to Christ and then in their baptism, they would receive Christ as their clothing, which is certainly how we understand it. What might the branches signify? I think we talked about palm branches a couple weeks ago. The branches are reminiscent of the festival of booths that is described by the prophet Zechariah. They identify Christ as our booth or our tabernacle, our dwelling place and refuge. When do we sing the words of verse 9, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. That's right, we sing it in the Sanctus. It combines, actually, uh, the Old Testament text, the vision of Isaiah, the throne room, holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of your glory, with Palm Sunday, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus comes into the holy city, he is actually fulfilling that vision that Isaiah had of the Lord sitting upon his throne, his throne being here in the Gospels, his cross. When they say Hosanna, what do they mean? What's that word mean? Hosanna. It means save us now. Now we mentioned the donkey being um, the son of David, Solomon. Here they call him son of David, so they make the connection. They recognize exactly um, what this means. And what is the title, or how is the title son of David important? Okay, think of Solomon. He, he did rule uh, over a time of peace and prosperity, but what happened to his kingdom? It was split between Jeroboam and Rehoboam and then faltered and failed, ultimately both northern and southern kingdoms. David had been promised a son, though, that would sit upon his throne and reign over his kingdom forever. And Jesus, of course, has his kingdom because he is our king and he reigns, he rules uh, over us with grace and peace, with forgiveness of sins. What does it mean to come in the name of the Lord? This is very important for us as a church. If Jesus comes in the name of the Lord, it means he comes with the full authority of his Father, of the Godhead. He is God made man. But Jesus also gives to us to go and say baptize in his name in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. That means that all the authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus, and now he hands that same authority over to us um, to work in his name, doing, uh, preaching his word, teaching the faith as he's given it to us, administering the sacraments. All right. Our meditation. Jesus entered Jerusalem to the praises of the crowds, just as Solomon had, but the chief priests and scribes responded like Abijah, or excuse me, Adonijah. They had become the false shepherds that Zechariah had foretold, the ones who stole from the people the truth of God's word. They had turned the temple from the place where the mercy of God had, was proclaimed to the place where men sought to buy and sell their own salvation. The faithful cried out and sought their salvation from the true son of David. This salvation could be purchased only by the shepherd who would be struck down for the sheep. His blood was the price that would redeem us. Through the preaching of the gospel, the father reveals this wondrous truth to his baptized children. In the divine service, we cry out, that the Father would save us through the body and blood of the one who comes in the name of the Lord upon the altar. Like the blind and the lame, we come to the altar, and his body and blood bring healing to our wearied bodies and souls. There ends our meditation. Continue with our hymn, Christ the Life of All the Living.
Christ the life of all the living, Christ the death of death, our foe, who thyself for me once giving to the darkest depths of woe, through thy sufferings, death, and merit, I eternal life inherit. Thousand, thousand thanks shall be, dearest Jesus, unto Triumphant cry, and 
shall praise Thee, Lord on high. All right, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray the collect for this week. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray our daily theme for prayer today. For faithfulness to the end, for the renewal of those who are withering in the faith or have fallen away, for pastors as they prepare to administer Christ's holy gifts, and for receptive hearts and minds on the Lord's day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let's pray today for all those in our congregation and those who have requested our prayers who are sick or ill, or recovering. We pray for Sarah, Marcella, Jan, Brad, Janet, Carol, Chris, and Sandy, Linda, Joan, Ken, Aaron, Brian, Carol, and Dale that the great physician uh, would give them healing according to his will, that he would give strength and guidance to the physicians, especially as they care not only for these, but also for all those suffering under COVID-19. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would excuse me, I'm praying the evening prayer. Let's pray the morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Lord be with you, and we'll see you um, first thing tomorrow, 9.30 a.m., for uh, our Palm Sunday service of Matins, um, and also join us for prayer this coming week. Lord be with you again, and we'll see you for lunch.